Hey everybody, I'm Kate Conroy. And I'm Vanessa Vitello. And this is Other People's Business, which is the podcast from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, which is the largest statewide business association in the country. For more info on us, visit njbia.org. We release a new episode every other Wednesday, so be on the lookout for that. Shout out to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance, the official sponsor of the show. They do home, auto, and workers' comp. I'm so used to be... <laughs> You mixed it up. You, you usually say, no, which is I the didn't. official. No, 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 you did. You usually put the, which is the official sponsor of our show at the end. And so I was waiting for that. Like, you know, I, I have your whole bit memorized. Sure. And when it gets like changed, you know, sorry. throws me off. No, I'm sorry. It's okay. Do you want to restart? Or you no, 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 I'm good. I'm right, good. Go so, a couple of housekeeping matters before we get started. This show airs every other Wednesday on your podcast network of choice iTunes, Google Play, Amazon's Alexa. Anywhere you can get a podcast, we're going to be there. If you're not into the whole podcast thing, you know, you just can't wrap your head around how you're going to subscribe and download the app and all that. No big deal. We throw this show on YouTube. You can check that out at youtube.com slash NJBIA. See these smiling faces every other Wednesday. And please subscribe, njbia.org slash subscribe. You know, you can plug in whatever network you want to do. They'll give you the link and then they'll just alert you whenever we're new. Um, before I get to our guest today, I just wanted to give you a, a quick update. Um, a couple episodes ago on the show, we were talking about the office lottery pool. Yeah. We won. We did. We did. We got like, I don't know, it's like between 20 and 50 bucks. Wow. For the first so, time ever, I participated. Yeah. So, so I'm you know, in that win. undefeated streak. Yeah. Yeah. Undefeated streak. Not win. enough to go to like Aruba and all that and we're get my uh, billion dollar movie theater, but you know, Wendy, it's progress. Wendy assured me we're not rich. Okay. But it's something. Sure. It's something. So anyway, <laughs> with us today is Jackie Larea of Fairley Dickinson University. So Jackie, say hi. Let the audience hear your voice. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. I am so excited. This is my first podcast, and I'm just loving the experience. This is a great one to have as your first podcast. This yeah. is the best one. It yeah. is the best one. I wasn't going to put us all the way at the top, but sure. I put yeah. you at the top. Oh, my Thank goodness. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> I like welcome. that. Okay, so today's icebreaker is, would you rather be the clown that distracts the bull or the cowboy who rides the bull? <laughs> Shut okay, up, Minnie. Why are you no, no. laughing? Go ahead, go ahead. I think I'd like to be the cowboy, actually. So you're very brave. You're a very brave person. I like to take risk. I do, but I also like to see things get done mm. and be like the cause of things getting done. So if I could take down the bull, yeah, that's wow. me. That's impressive. I'd like to do that. I only want to be the clown. And as soon as the bull like looks vaguely in my direction, I'm just going to book it right out of that arena except that if you run then Defeats he's gonna the, chase right. you it does you know, like, yeah it you kind of have to jump out of the way at the last second this is why i left because there's no good answer to this you're dying one way or the other or you're no, in you're in jeopardy of death one way yeah, or the other. Take it down jeopardy right, right exactly she's gonna take the bull down just come with me but you don't actually f combat a bull when you no, fight a bull you, you just like, ride it the red flag yeah oh wait i or guess you we're thinking yeah. of two different things like there's the rodeo bull right the cowboy rides it but and there is a clown in that in that arena or in that oh well, what are you talking about because i'm i'm trying to decide whether i want to die by getting gored or die by no, getting thrown running, off and breaking my neck we're not running, running with the bulls. bulls in pamplona we're not that's not well, what this is like, okay so the, my, my vision of what a bullfight is is one guy waves a little a red flag this and the a, other one is riding you know like, no, no it's not that bullfight no oh. this is a rodeo where you get on a bull and you are only allowed to hold it with one hand Oh. And you have to like stay on for 45 seconds. You know, I combine those two things in my mind. I had, because I said I, I'm either the guy that gets thrown off or I'm the guy that's doing this. And it didn't occur to me in my mind that those are two separate things entirely. They are two separate. Yeah. Although I think I did the same thing initially. I forgot about it. All right, so then I want to be the guy with the, the tarp. That's not an option. What do you mean that the clown, right? Like, isn't that what you put on it? Yeah, but that's thing? not the bullfighter. The but bullfighter is the one There's also another red. one where you actually have to tie, take the bull down, and tie it up. Yeah, that's right. Different that's one. That sounds like I the advanced, thinking, you know, we're class. Of all three. Yeah, you're thinking bull of a third activities. different bull activities. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Why are there this many activities that people are like, a... let's play with bulls? I think <laughs> that sounds like a fun thing. I think there's not enough to do out west, and so cowboys decided to have an event. And they, do they call not it have rodeo. dogs and cats out there. Okay, like, yeah. yeah, no contest. We though. can ship them some, you know. I know, right? Huh. Yeah, daredevils. They want to jump on a bull and see how long they can last. That's ridiculous. I agree. That's why I want to be the clown. Yeah, so the... Wait, wait, wait. So because you said I was wrong before, like the guy... There's the there guy with the red... There's no... There, El Matadors. Matador. That's the name. 
That's not what we're talking about? Correct. So what's this? That's a bull fight. Right, yeah, right. What, are, what are you talking about? So the guy, I already explained. I know, but I'm like clearly not getting this. This is like All right. not here. All right, so there's a bunch of little pens and there's a bunch of bulls and right. there's a cowboy on top of each one. Right, I and, got that. Right, and they open the pens up and the bull jumps out and starts uh -huh. to like buck the cowboy off and you have to try to stay on as long as possible. Right. Right. So who's the other guy the, that you're talking the about? The clown. The clown. What does so the clown do? So when the cowboy falls off and it looks like he's going to get crushed to death by the bull's stomping feet, oh. the clown is like, hey, 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 over here, distracts the bull, gets the bull away from the cowboy to save his life. The sad part, of course, is that the bull is now totally focused on the clown wanting to have some lunch or crush it to death. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I'm imagining you don't do that from like three feet away. No, no, no. The, yeah, clown, like, the, the clown is like on the fence usually, like yeah. jumps off the fence, hey, hey, and then jumps back to the fence. Sure. And, or over the fence. Gives the cowboy enough time to like get up and run away. None of these are good options. <laughs> they need better things the to clown, do. Right? <laughs> the clown is the safer one though. I guess. I still want to be the mad at I know it's not one of your options. I'm going to pick option C. I want to be the guy with the red carp. It's not an option though. But why not? Why can't I just make that an option? Like if we're if we're talking about what we want to do with bulls. Because the game and is And option D is not something where I like I can just raise them and be nice, you know, like can you imagine if you just had like a pet bull and you just raised it to be like a good one? A you know, like in the Lion that. King like where they're like we can train him to be a good lion or you know, like, a lot of people do side. actually not I don't know if a lot of people do that. But there's a woman online, her website is The Daily Coyote, and she has like a bull for a pet, she's got some cows as pets, she's got a coyote as a pet, and she takes pictures of them online. Mm. It's really cool. Okay. But so then I guess my answer is anything other than the guy riding it, and I'll tell you why. Because when I was in college, I did one of those, not like a real bull, you know, they have the, the mechanical, mechanical thing. Yeah. And it was like two seconds tops. Like probably not even two seconds, it was like way less than that. Yeah. So I, I'm not very good at it. I can't imagine. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Do you want to change yours? You said you were going to take the bull down, but that's not what this says. All right. I'm still riding the bull. You're still riding the bull. Yeah. That's really impressive. Yeah. yeah. It's very brave. I, <laughs> I wish we had one of these things like in the office and we could just try it. But, A mechanical yeah, bull? Like, yeah, just to you know, mess around with. You know? <laughs> like, team building. I, like I'm every day you could try to like increase your score or something, you know? I'm imagining that memo, that email to HR with a CC to Michelle Sikarka. Hey guys, brainstorming today. We were thinking a mechanical bull might be a yeah. fun addition to the office. Just, you know, stress release and, you know, you know, just, uh, what did you say, competition? Trying to see how... Yeah. Right. It'd be like that time that we were debating about whether to rent or buy the popcorn machine. <laughs> Only this would be a bull, you know? I vote for the popcorn machine. Yeah, I mean, they'll probably get us the popcorn machine before they get the mechanical bull. And it would smell better. Probably. Well, no, the, the, well, the, the mechanical, mechanical bull is not going to smell bad. You know, you got to get, like, it it's like still it's a gym. smell better. It's like yeah. in the gym, you got to, like, wipe right. it down when you're, you're right. done, you know? Like, yeah. Oh my god, this conversation is off the rails. Okay, fine. So, Jackie, tell us about what you do for Fairleigh Dickinson University. So, um, at Fairleigh, I am going on um, a year, a little over a year and a half with them as their Director of Corporate Outreach and Training. So, my role... Congratulations. Is, thank That's awesome. You, thank you. It's been an amazing ride. Uh, because it is a fairly new program for us where my main role is to partner with businesses in the community, not only in New Jersey, but uh, with, with web-based learning and e-learning. We can basically um, educate and partner with the entire country and beyond that. Wow. So creating customized training specifically for workforce development um, for whether you be an incumbent worker and the company wants to improve the skills or add on skills to their their workforce currently or working with Department of Labor, Labor and Workforce Development in identifying populations of the community that need skills to um, gain employment to support themselves and their families. What kind of skills are we talking about? So it could be um, anything from from diversity and inclusion training, leadership training, uh, hospitality, customer service training, could be first aid training, um, it could be effective communication. You know, uh, with today's workforce, there are five different um, generations in the current workforce, mm -hmm. right? And so each of us, each generation, each individual, let me just say, has their unique favorite way to communicate. And there's no right way and there's no wrong way, but for certain situations, there's an appropriate way. Mm. Right? So learning what is the most effective way to communicate amongst your team, um, and this is from top down, down up, 
the middle out, what is the most effective way, depending on the situation, to communicate messaging um, to your, your peers and your colleagues? So that has been quite important as well. Project management has been huge. Uh, we do a lot with um, law enforcement as well, uh, a, a lot of training there. And just any skills, a lot of soft skills training as well for people who need to be forward facing with customers or how to deal and communicate with your, your peers and your colleagues. So everything having to do with creating a successful workforce that creates a successful business, that creates a successful economy. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. So very vast. That's incredible. Yeah. And do the best part is that, I'm sorry, is, is that we actually go to our um, partners' sites. That was the answer to my question. I was going to ask if you do it online or if you do it at the uh, university. Wow, look at that. We're on the same brain. I didn't link. even yeah. look. I didn't <laughs> even look. See, whatever is the easiest thing for our partners. So there are some situations where partners want to come off-site yeah. to do a bit of a retreat, if you will, sure. to get out of the yeah. normal environment, to get folks in a mindset of, okay, this is, let's separate work, let's not be in front of our computers, let's come and mm -hmm. be in a place that's different, maybe somewhere more relaxed. We have unbelievable sites at Fairleigh Dickinson University. We have two uh, campuses in New Jersey, one in Madison and one in uh, the Teaneck Hackensack area. So we have many options. So we brought. I know where Hackensack is. Where's Madison? Um, Florham Park, Morris County. Morris County. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we've brought um, clients to us and we have also gone to clients. They're different sites, different times, whatever is the most appropriate and convenient for them to deliver training to their people. Wow. Sweet. Yeah. And we do online as well, oh. if you so choose. But there's certain things that are just more meaningful if you could do it in person. Mm -hmm. And so we boast about um, the instructors and facilitators that we use that they are corporate or industry subject matter experts. So they're going to come in and talk about real world scenarios with the students and the trainees so that the applications of what they've learned is immediate. How many trainings would you say that you do in like a week or a month or a year? Oh gosh, that actually depends. I mean, we consistently at Petroselli College, which is part of Fairleigh Dickinson University, that's the, um, the College of Continuing Studies, we have programs that run all year, mm -hmm. just as like a traditional college um, would. So fall, spring, and then summer sessions. With me, it could be um, 10 in a week, it could be three in a day. It, could, it really huh. depends on what the training is and what the client wants. So we have a lot of different programming. Yeah, of note is uh, this, this Spanish program that we have for individuals who are primarily Spanish speaking mm -hmm. or want to finish their degree. So we deliver the programming um, in Spanish with the goal of transitioning them into the English language, but the actual curricula is delivered in Spanish initially. We have a Korean program. We have, um, uh, we just try to meet the community where they need for us to be. So it's very exciting. That's really interesting. I had no idea that a, a Spanish language course was was offered. It's not a course. It no, is she's a, talking about no, the entire I know, degree. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. That's not what I said. Isn't what I meant. You, you're right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I so, had no idea. This yeah, is specialized. This specific. That's great. Very very exciting. Yeah. Hmm. Anything else? So. So as days go on, we try to be as relevant as we can. Um, so our initial conversations with our partners, whether they be NJBIA, because you guys are amazing partners. Aren't we though? Oh, yes, you, you are. So <laughs> I just give a high five there. Thank yes. You. Um, is what what's keeping you guys up at night? What what are the pain points, and how can we as a university partner best? with you to help address those things. And so every day is a different opportunity. That is awesome. I gotta say, my the, my favorite thing about my job is that every day is a different day. Like every day is different from the day before. And that must be so nice to, to meet with all kinds of different 
people and hear about their specific issues and customize, tailor a program just for them, knowing in your heart that this is going to like make a meaningful impact and help them in a serious way. I just love that. That's so cool. It is very cool. And we could be talking about leadership within organizations as well, yeah, or, or individuals who have never worked a day in their life. Right. Um, so again, the question of what do you need to be successful? Asking that question and hearing the answers, you could ask two people in the exact same room or the exact same company and get two very different answers. So it is mm, a true. very, very um, fun and exciting and innovative way to run business. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about Fairleigh Dickinson in general. I know that it's uh, it's been around for a long time. Well, Fairleigh is the largest private nonprofit um, institution in New Jersey of oh. higher education. But what a lot of people don't realize, so I already mentioned our two campuses in New Jersey, but we also have one in Roxton, um, England, and in wow. Vancouver in Canada. So we are an international entity and that's very, very exciting. Um, and what makes it even more exciting here in New Jersey is that New Jersey, I think, ranks the second most diverse population in the country. So when we can say that we are made up, our, our, you know, we are entrenched in diversity and different parts of the world, that really gives us a lot of credibility. Um, our faculty, our students reflect that diversity as well. So we're very, very proud of that, especially with um, what's so important now with diversity and inclusion in every aspect of business and life mm -hmm. in general. So we have been able to uh, capitalize on all of our experiences uh, with diversity and inclusion and just being um, you know, in a lot of places in the world. So that is very, very exciting. Cool. Anything else we should know before we jump to something else, jump to a break? Um, well, just know that we are open to any kind of innovation, any kind of great ideas that our business partners have that they want to um, embark on. And we do have the, the ability and the want, the desire uh, to be flexible and innovative with the community and with our partners. So, That's fabulous. Yeah. So often you hear somebody will bring an idea and they'll be like, nope, can't do it. Too outside the box. Nope, it's too expensive. Nope, too this, too that. And it's great that you're just like, we'll explore just about anything. It, because you never know what's going to work anymore. Right. And it could be several different things. But if you make a mistake, you learn from the mistake and you correct it. But in today's age where the need and the want of um, the people that we're trying to provide services to is so diverse as far as modes of communication and times that they want to learn and times that they can learn and mm -hmm. what they want to learn. Mm -hmm. You have to be innovative and flexible mm -hmm. and adaptable. So we are definitely going to be continuing that and just open to any conversation. Uh, my, my question to everyone is, what is your wish list? Let's start there. Wow. And let's see if we can do it. And you guys started as a traditional four-year degree university, right? Well, actually, Petroselli started as a two-year. Really? Right. And then um, we, we uh, developed into uh, into Fairleigh Dickinson University. And now we, we offer bachelor's and master's degrees as well. So we've become traditional yet Outside contemporary. Outside yeah. Yes. That's really cool. <laughs> yes. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to play Awful or Awesome. And we're back, and it is now time to play my favorite game, Awful or Awesome. I'm going to name three things in quick succession, and we each have to decide quickly if they're awful or awesome and be prepared to defend your answers. Ready? Ready. First up, colloquialisms. <laughs> so this bears some explanation. In our pre-taping interview... Yeah, because that's <laughs> <laughs> just like a part of language, sure. Yeah. Right, like commas. How do you feel about commas? How do you feel about adjectives, Kate? <laughs> you expressed a very strong feeling about colloquialism. Oh, so I had to like bring it up because I think that is hilarious. I, wanna, I would like to hear you talk more about that. I just, so, okay. Um, I am... I'm pretty good at the English language. I'm pretty good. You're very good. Are you kidding? You're it very... is my primary and only language, but... 
<laughs> I'm pretty good at English. I don't speak anything yeah, else. But, I don't speak yeah. anything else. Except we're a little Jamaican, but um, the thoughts that have to go into responses that are appropriate when people speak in colloquialisms, mm -hmm. it makes you stop and think about, all right, what do they really mean? Right. So, like, should we give an example in case there's anybody out there? Please. Like, yes. So, um, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Like, really? Is anybody really going to accidentally throw the baby out when they drain the bathtub anymore? Like, that's just not a thing. It's not a thing, right? Mm. And I'm very visual, so I know yes. they're not saying specifically, no. don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. But can you just tell me what you're trying right. to say? Right. Just to, don't, over, is that, does it mean don't overreact? I still don't really know I what think it means. it means going, taking something so far that it becomes destructive. Okay. Right. All right. So I would it's prefer kind of like to in the same line as the forest and the trees and all that. Yeah. Right. The forest. You can't and the see trees. the forest yeah, for the true. trees. For the trees. So you're so thick in it, and there's a tree here and here and here. You can't see the thirty thousand foot perspective that there's a forest all around you. Okay. But I agree. It's it's if you're a really visual person, and I am too. The first thing I imagine is a tin tub full of dirty water getting tossed out into the backyard, and the baby with, going with it. With the child going. With yeah. It. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Colloquialisms. Yeah. So I don't, I don't hate them, but I, yeah. I recognize strong feelings in you. <laughs> yes. I just, when, when you say something to me that I, that has that makes me have to think even farther than <laughs> I already have to think is perplexing. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. It's Usually perplexing. you've just heard them so many times at this point, though, that it's it's almost like they're saying whatever it is they normally would say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't and know. other things like, um, like. Eight ways to Sunday, or <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that means. Where do those things come from? And they're used quite a bit. Yeah, uh, and I know that from some movie somewhere it came out, and it, everyone decided to start using it. Well, I the, suppose I don't know. The baby in the bathwater goes back to when people would only bathe once a week. Did you Did you know that? No. Yeah. So once upon a time. I know, I'm once sorry. Upon once time. upon a time in this country, <laughs> in the world, people only bathed once a week. And the head of the house, the father, went first because he was the most important, and then the mother, and then all the children, oldest to youngest. So the but and they all used the same bath water because it was expensive to heat and you know difficult to lug and carry and whatever. So by the Wouldn't time really still be hot by that time you probably got to the last not. Yeah. So by the time the baby got to take a bath, the water was filthy and you couldn't theoretically see the baby in the bath water, water, so you might accidentally throw the water out with the baby in the water. Like, it could happen. Throw the baby out with the bath water is a thing that, I guess, used to happen. I'm sure somebody did. <laughs> I'm sure that's, that, like, it's one of those things where you say, like, you wouldn't say it unless it happened at least but once. But isn't that horrifying? Now I hate it even more. Right! <laughs> I know, it's horrifying. Okay. Like, yeah. I don't want to take a bath in water that... Eight other people have already, and they had big families back then because, you know, so many infant mortality rate was high and you mm -hmm. got to plant the farm somehow and it's god awful. Okay, so you reinforce why I don't like those guys. Yeah. Things. So thank you. No. Right, that. or rule Eight. of thumb. Rule of thumb is terrible. Rule of thumb is terrible. Thumb. Do you know where that comes from? No. In the Bible, there is a verse about how you're allowed to beat your wife, but only with a, a stick no bigger than your thumb. Oh. Right, isn't that delightful? See, now, I thought the rule of thumb, because I, I am a, a bit of an artist, this, Oh, that, right? no. So the rule not... of thumb is to measure proportion. That's not it. But that's not it. <laughs> that's it's not, not it. it. <laughs> You're not even like responding properly to the person because you have no idea what they're saying. Right. So there you mm. go. Yeah. All right. I I think after this conversation, I'm with you. Colloquialisms are confusing and difficult. They should not be used. Straight up. Just tell me what you mean. <laughs> right. Just tell me what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Just straight up. Um. Yeah. Either I, I'm pretty neutral on this. I don't. You know. Like I guess through context clues, even if you'd never heard one of these things, you usually just figure out what the person wants to say. It's it's part of our speech. You know. These things yeah. come up all the time. So. I never actually thought about it until right now. <laughs> I had thought about the rule of thumb thing. I haven't said that since I learned what that I meant. I haven't either. You know, I don't but, use that phrase yeah. at all because it's awful. It is awful, especially yeah. in today's day. So I will not mm. use that either. Not that I've reused it before. <laughs> no. Mm. Okay, next up, food tours. You know, I've never been on one, but I, I'd probably love to do it. So yeah. we'll go with awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're awesome. I love them because they're usually walking. So there's a little bit of exercise, which offsets whatever food you're going to eat. And uh, the food's usually really, really good. So I'm down for it. I like food tours. 
totally awesome because when I visit other countries, I like to go into the markets. Mm -hmm. And that one of the like most a great time to do one. The, yeah. the, the, one of the greatest trips I ever went on was to um, South Korea, mm. and we went into the nighttime fish seafood market. And you literally can just choose whatever you want, and then you bring it up uh, along the entire perimeter. Upstairs are these different restaurants that you can oh bring your food, and they cook it right up, and you sit and you eat it. And it's just, it's just seeing how that community, that neighborhood lives. That's incredible. Is the best, and it's food. When you first said nighttime fish market, I was like, as opposed to the daytime fish market, I couldn't, I wasn't, but that is awesome. So you bring it to a restaurant and they just cook it for yes. you. Yes. Yeah. I don't know whether it's in Asia or not, but Asia, a number of countries in Asia like night markets. Hmm. So they will stay open until wee hours of the night. And that is the entertainment for the family, dates, whatever. And it's pretty cool. Which is weird, because I've always thought that the fish markets open first like if you want to get yeah, the, the fish best yeah. fish at the fish market you have to get there at like four in the morning and you probably would still do that but this is really for your consumption right for personal consumption sure, sure. but if you if you have a store if you have your own store and you sell seafood you're going to want to get there because there's because constantly being replenished throughout yeah. the night and so to get the freshest you want to go as late as possible in the wee hours of the morning but yeah this is really for um communities families to go in and have a really fresh seafood dinner. I've never heard of that before. That's oh, it's amazing. Awesome. And you'd never know that they were there unless no. you had a local light take you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. It's cool. Very cool. Yeah, I definitely want to give one a try. I actually had never even heard of food tours as a concept until we did our Big Shot um, mm -hmm. contest, I want to say last year. Yeah, last year. 20, no, maybe 2017. Because it was, oh, no, okay, it went from 2017 into 2018. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, Jersey City Food Tours was one of our finalists. That was the first one I had ever heard of. And now I know that this is like a thing people do, and I'm like down for it. So, yeah, you know. I did one for um, the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And it started at City Hall with a, a stoop waffle. And then we went to Chinatown and got What's dumplings. a stoop waffle? It's like a little dessert. It's like waffle. a cookie thing. Waffle. It's a waffle cookie with like something sweet inside of it. It's like a really thin sandwich cookie. So like an Oreo, but waffle. Yeah. Okay. And really thin. Like super, okay. super, super thin. And then we did Chinatown for a dumpling, and then we did... Um, a dumpling? Yeah, we each got a dumpling. Well, I guess you can't really eat that no, much at each place just, if you're going to eat it's it It's just a bite. Yeah. We went to Little Italy, and we got fresh mozzarella and prosciutto. Mm. And then we went to this um, Jewish bakery, and we got knishes. And we went to a German beer garden, and we got pretzels. Like, it was a really fun little... Oh, wow. And as we were walking from one place to another, we got like a little historic conversation about what the neighborhood was. It was really fun. That is fun. Yeah, I'm a big fan of food tours. Anyway. I just love eating, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I that one. I'm totally. Fan. All right, last one, the circus. Oh, the circus. They, they don't do it anymore, right? I think they do enough of them. I don't know. I I thought I remember, at least Barnum and Bailey definitely closed down, right? Right, but I think uh, Big Apple Circus is still a thing. Is that yeah. a thing? I, I think, think so. so. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen the circus since I was a little kid. And uh, it's weird now. I've got a kid of my own, and I don't. She'll never see the circus, I guess, unless I go to that one. I don't know. I, but yeah. So, are, do you think she's missing out? On I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I guess it's like it's one of those things. Like, where else? I mean, I'm not going to take her to India. Where else are you going to see like elephants? And well, I guess you could go to the go zoo, to the right? Zoo, yeah. Do they have elephants at the zoo? Totally. I have, oh, sure. Do they? One hundred percent. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so maybe she's not missing out. I mean, like, you know, there's there's other stuff. They had the acrobats and the tightrope walking and everything. You know, that that seems, like, pretty cool. But Yeah, I, I mean, know. if they removed the animals from the circus, I think I'd be fine with the circus. Well, I think that's why they stopped doing it. They got so many complaints from PETA and everything. That, yeah, yeah, which is good. I'm glad that they... I hate that any business had to close down, but it makes me sad that the animals kind of were not well treated. Oh, were they? I don't know. I mean, you just assume that, like, they're part of the act, they're part of the family, but I don't know. I don't want to like defend them if I have no idea what I'm talking about either, so yeah. Yeah, well, okay, so before we get go off on this tangent, you want to go off on the I, I, I'm neutral. You're neutral. I am neutral too, because I think that animals, like a dog, I have a dog. Mm -hmm. She leads a very cush life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so, um, I believe that in the circus, 
the reputable ones treated their animals like I treat my dog. Yeah. Very cush and very well taken care of. And so we actually, when I was in Thailand, I, I had this thing for tigers and I had this opportunity to take a picture and a video with a live tiger. And I just love, of course I had to, this was after I rode the elephants, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to take your daughter to see elephants, Thailand sure. is a place to go in Bangkok. <laughs> yeah, sure, right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this tiger, I literally had my head on his head and they're like, oh, you know, he's chained up and he's sedated. And yeah, I'm like, say. but he's Red dragon well style. fed and he's beautifully clean and he's gorgeous and he doesn't seem unhappy and the, his friends are in their very huge pens running around with freedom and this guy just happens to be the one that you take pictures with right now. Mm. So um, they're like, yeah, probably mistreated, but man, is that cool. So uh, that's why I'm kind of, there's certain people that I know abuse animals or certain entities that abuse animals, but then there are others that I think Treat them, them well. as part of the family. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I would have liked to have seen them, I don't know, keep the circus going, but maybe either like remove the animals because, you know, you can still do it with the tightrope walking and the, That's cool. the trapeze and everything. Like, or maybe have like greater oversight from animal activist groups to make sure that everything's going right. I don't know. I remember as a child going to the circus, like on a school field trip, and mm. it was a big deal and you know there were three rings and the clowns were really fun and the tightrope walker and the trapeze artists that was really really fun but the and the the animals of course were really fun too and i didn't yeah. think about abuse or yeah, not because you were like five like, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> um but then do you remember that book water for elephants yeah. yes i hated the book but there was really good examples of animal abuse in that book right. and um I just, I know people and human nature is, you know, animals don't complain the way that people complain. They don't have a voice. They, don't, they can't talk. Uh, an elephant could step on you. I don't well, <laughs> I, well I, isn't that part of the problem? These animals did lash back. And so, no, I don't want to do this right. anymore. And uh -huh. so that's right. why it's become a safety issue. But let's talk about safety. The Walendas, the flying Walendas, right? I don't know what that is. So the, that's the family that's renowned oh, internationally like the flying for the greats, oh, but like in real right. life. So Thank I, you. Okay. I just heard recently that they were working on a trick that they've decided not to do because it is so unsafe. So they're up on the tight ropes, no nets. So mm -hmm. one could say, well, that's abusive. Yeah. Right? Because what if kids. they fall and you know that people have fallen. And that's how Robin lost killed. his parents. Yeah. Right? Oh so, <laughs> Sorry. He's talking about Batman and Robin. Yeah, like Robin, his family was the Flying Graysons, and then his family, like the parents fell off the thing. Sorry, go ahead. When you said <laughs> Flying Graysons, I, I knew I knew what you meant, but I hadn't, right. Yeah. I had no yeah. idea, sorry. That's okay, go ahead. It's not your fault. <laughs> so yeah, so they decided not to do it. and they Because it's so dangerous. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so they, and you know we have seen numerous accidents, uh, acrobatics and things falling and ropes breaking and... So I guess it's what do they call it? Um, um, what do they call it when? Uh, death defying. <laughs> well, death defying for sure, yeah. but um, occupational hazard. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right. If you're if you're the family, the flying Walendas, Walendas, and you've got kids and they're minors and they're up there doing that, they did not choose that. A child cannot possibly mm. make that decision. That's borderline abusive. Mm -hmm. But you talk about legacy, right? Right. Uh, yes, right. of course. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow, that got depressing fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, there's good things about the circus too. There's the popcorn and the cracker jacks and the cotton candy mm -hmm. and the balloons. The junk food is really the junk fun. food is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It's a true thing. I went to a fair once and it was like circus like, but it wasn't actually a circus. But it was like the same concept, and they were selling cheeseburgers where the buns were actually glazed donuts. And I didn't order it Dude. because I was an adult, you know, and I was like, but like, man, if they had just called me like 10 years earlier, I would have, I would have definitely eaten like three of those. You know? What does being an adult have to do with, I would have making good choices. You know, like, yeah, that's not even like making a good choice versus a bad choice. It's like, you know, it's like making a good choice or making a horrible choice. But I, uh, taste. I wanted it. Yeah. I wanted it so bad. Yeah. So I keep thinking about that show Carnival. Remember that HBO show Carnival? Mm -hmm. I don't. 
I guess because of the circus train and the wagons and like packing it up and the, the ropes and the roustabouts. I don't know. I just, throughout this whole conversation, I keep thinking about it. Hmm. Not quite the same thing, of course. Okay. But anyway. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go neutral, but I wish they'd, you know, they'd find a way to bring it back that would be like good for everyone, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair. All right. I think that that's the game. Sure. So Jackie, <laughs> give us one piece of advice you'd give to your younger self. So later on in life, I kind of learned hard life lessons from tragedy, from just oh, man. a couple of hard knocks. So to my younger self, I would say, live every day till it's fullest. Mm. And don't take advantage or don't take for granted what you have. Um, I was lucky enough, but unfortunate enough to know that earlier in my adult life, but I, I don't want to think about the opportunities that I wasted prior to learning those lessons. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, and and unfortunately, sometimes it takes um, bad things for you to appreciate the good things. But that is what I would tell myself. No, that's that's totally good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I always, for me lately, it is a constant balancing act between life is short, seize the day, live every moment to its fullest, and the bank account is going to run out at, at some point eventually. So just calm down, cool the little travel bug inside you, and next year is still going to happen, so you don't have to... Maybe. Right! Right! <laughs> exactly! Exactly. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I feel that piece of advice. And there's a balance. Yes. There's a, it's when you go overboard. Right is when, first of all, is when the special stuff isn't special anymore. Oh, mm. that's, mm, like, I like we it. Could, we, could, we could waste our entire bank account right now just jumping from paradise to paradise, yeah. right? We could, but then it's not paradise special. It's not paradise. boring. So you come, you work, you, you save up the money again and anticipate. The fun. Yes, the reward. So there's absolutely a balance. Okay, I like that. I like that. That's really good. Good job. Is there anything coming up that you want like to promote? Well, so promotion, um, always, I had mentioned before, the diversity and inclusion in initiatives that the uh, Fairleigh Dickinson is really very um, much into. But more than promoting, I would like to just say thank you to Michelle Sakurka and the entire team at NJBIA for what you did in collaboration with us back um, in the at the end of winter, beginning of spring at our um, workplace diversity, which was our diversity and inclusion um, conferences at both of our campuses at uh, Madison and in um, Teaneck, where we invited businesses in the community in to talk about this very, very hot topic. And NJBIA helped us so greatly with promoting and being our, our panelists and taking part in the entire thing from start to finish. And it would not have been nearly as successful as it was without NJBIA. Wow. So That's thank awesome. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Shout out to Michelle. I'm actually yes. going to say you're welcome on that one because I filmed something like four videos promoting that event. Oh, you did? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well, so we're taking total credit for it. Yeah, please do. Please You're, do. Welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Happy to do it. Uh, thank you. So we hope to continue that with, with you guys because it was amazing. Sure. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Yeah. Fabulous. All right, so let's just say someone is looking to uh, get some training for their workplace or maybe just themselves. How could they go about getting a hold of you? So I would love for your, them to either email me or call me. So my email is l-u-e-r-a-i-a -A at f-d-u dot e-d-u. Um, that's, that's a good way. But you can also call me on my cell, which is 551-255-6997. And I will get right back to you if I don't pick up on the spot. So yeah, anxious. Nobody to talk picks to up an unknown number on the spot anymore. Anyway. <laughs> I do. It's all robo -car. I you do because you, oh, right. you never know. You never know. I don't could... know. I, I've taken on this like thing of like important ones will go to voicemail and somebody will be like, oh, I'm a real caller. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'd rather make that determination than to um, miss the opportunity to help someone. Sure. No, that's that's a good plan. Yeah. I like it. Mm. 
Very cool. All right. Well, I think that's our show. That's our show. Yeah. Thank you to our listeners, especially subscribers. We really appreciate the support. Uh, thank you to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, the official sponsor of the show. They do home, auto, and workers' comp, so check them out. And finally, thank you to Jackie Lurea from Fairleigh Dickinson University for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me again. Oh, this it's was our great pleasure. fun. It was our pleasure. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.